Shabbat Shalom and welcome to the live streaming of our Shakarit service this morning, coming to you from the Holy Land of Australia on a bit of a rainy day this morning, but nevertheless a wonderful day uh, in springtime. So Shalom to you all and uh, Shabbat Shalom to you, Yonatan. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi Lawrence. Shabbat Shalom to all of you here in the studio, Joel, Samuel and Michelle, thank you for your help. And I want to say Shabbat Shalom to a few people, they are coming, we have 28 people right now, Shabbat Shalom for all of you, Shabbat Shalom for Linda, Eleanor Cameron, David, Shabbat Shalom, your son, and Shabbat Shalom for Ronald. And welcome to all of you. Good to have you with us, uh, as we focus our attention on the Lord, enter into these prayers that we pray every week, and yet Amen. they're meaningful because we come with the right heart and intention uh, within our spirit. So uh, let's worship the Lord together. Amen. And let's start with Matobu. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. O Lord, through your abundant kindness I will enter your house. In all, I will bow down towards your holy sanctuary. O oh Lord, I love the house where you dwell and the place where your glory resides. I shall prostrate myself and bow, bend the knee before the Lord my Maker. And as for me, my prayers to you, O oh Lord, at a time of favor. O oh God, in your abundant grace, answer me with the truth of your salvation. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Asher natan lanu et derech ha Yeshua ba Mashiach Yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Yeah. 
wonderful prayer for us to be praying this morning and thinking of Israel and for all of us under the Lord's care. Behold, he who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. He will not let your foot be moved. He will keep he who keeps you will not slumber. Adonai Shomrecha, Adonai Tzelcha Ad Yal Yeminecha, Yomam Hashemesh, Lo Yakecha, Leyarech Balayla. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you during the day, nor the moon by night. Adonai Yishmerecha, Mikol Ra, Yishmo Et Nafshecha, Adonai Yishmo Tzelcha Uvokecha, Meatava Adolam. The Lord will guard you against all harm. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from now on and forevermore. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. Ose shalom di Roma, uya se shalom aleimu, be al kol Israel, be imru, be imru amen. Ose. Shalom, ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu ve alcohol Israel. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu ve alcohol Israel. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu ve alcohol Israel. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu. Shalom aleinu ve alcohol Israel ve imru ve imru amen. May he who makes peace in his high places make peace upon us and upon all Israel, to which we all say, Amen. Shema
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, ve'chol avavacha, ve'chol nafshecha, ve'chol me'odecha. Ve'ayu hadvarim ha'aleh, asher anochi metzavecha hayom al levavecha. Ve'ineshantam levanecha ve'debata bam, ve'shivtecha be'veitecha, u'vlechtecha v'aderech, u'vshokbecha u'vkomecha. Ukshaptam lot al yadecha, where you let out a fort bain and echa, Ukhtaptam al mezazot betecha, ubisharecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. All the, uh, and these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. Behavta lerecha kamocha. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu velohei avoteinu, Elohei Abraham, Elohei Yitzchak, velohei Yaakov. Ha'el ha'gadol, ha'gibor ve'hanora, El Elyon, Vomel Chasidim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Vezoche Chasde Avot. We may be Goel Livne Venehem, the Maan Shemo Baava, Melech, Hosea, Mashiach, Magen, Baruch, Ata Adonai, Magen Avraham. Melekose, Mashia, Magen, Melekose, Mashia, Magen, Baruch. Adonai, Baruch atah Adonai, Magen Abraham Baruch atah Adonai, Baruch atah Adonai, Magen Abraham Melech Oser, Moshiach Magen Melech Oser, Moshiach Magen Baruch atah Adonai, Baruch atah Adonai, Magen Abraham Baruch atah Adonai, Baruch atah Adonai Blessed are you, O Lord our God and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God who bestows loving kindness and creates all and remembers the kindness shown to the fathers and brings the Redeemer to their, children, to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, Blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. Ata gibor leolam Adonai, mechaye metim ata rav lehoshia. Mechakel chayim bechesed, mechaye metim barachamim rabim. Somech noflim verofei cholim, umatir asurim, umakayem umanato leshne afa. Mi kamocha baal geberot, omi domelach. Melech meimit, umachaye umatzmiach yeshua. Venema'an ata lechayot metim, baruch ata Adonai mechaye hametim. You, O Lord, are mighty forever. You raise the dead, you are mighty to save. You sustain the living with grace, the dead with abundant mercy, uphold the fallen, healing the sick, set free those in bondage, and keep faith with those that sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of mighty deeds, and who can compare to you? King causes death and restores life, and makes salvation sprout. And you are faithful to resurrect the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who resurrects the dead.
holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts who was and is and is to come. and sing that song without smiling at the same time. Let's say the blessing all together. Sim shalom tova v'racha chen v'chesed v'rachamim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael amecha v'cheinu avinu kulanu k'echad v'or panecha Bestow peace, goodness and blessing, grace, kindness and mercy upon us and upon all your people Israel. Bless us our Father, all of us as one with the light of your countenance. Baruch atah Adonai, hambarech et amo Yisrael bashalom. Blessed are you, O Lord, who blesses his people Israel with peace. Amen. And now as we say the Lord's Prayer together, this is the prayer that Yeshua taught his disciples. It's a model prayer for us. It covers all the most important parts of uh, a, full, a fully-fledged prayer. But let's enter this with uh, intention in our hearts. There are parts of this prayer where we need to forgive those who have sinned against us. So think about this week that you've just had. If there's something that you need to deal with, somebody that's upset you, talk to the Lord before we have this prayer and forgive them because our Father in heaven has forgiven us. And so we too can be gracious. In fact, we need to be. So let's say this prayer together. Avinu shabashamayim hikadesh shmecha Tavo Machutecha, Yatse Retonha Baaretz Kashen Asa Bashamayim. Tenlanu Hayom Lechem Kukenu, Uslachlanu et Ashmatenu, Kashe Sochima Nachnu Lashe Ashmu Lanu. Vel Tivienu Lede Masa, Him Kim Hatsilenu Minhara, Kilacham Lacha, Vehagbara, Yatiferet Lome Olomim. Amen. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy among us. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily food. Forgive us what we have done wrong, in the same way we forgive those who have wronged us. And do not lead us into hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. For the kingship, power, and glory are yours forever. Amen. So let us uh, bless the Lord for giving us the Torah. And one day the Torah will go forth from Jerusalem and the word of the Lord <coughs> from, from uh, Zion. And that's the time of the Messianic kingdom. And so we give thanks to God for that Torah that he gave us. And uh, let us also uh, thank the Lord for the reading today. Let us uh, go to our parashah for today. So today our parasha comes uh, to you from uh, the book of Deuteronomy. We've been in the book of Deuteronomy for uh, some time now. And this week we're at Netzavim Vayelech, which is a double reading today. Every now and again there's a double reading in order to 
complete the cycle of readings at the right time. And uh, very soon we'll be coming to the end of our cycle of readings at the end of uh, the Feast of uh, Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, we'll have um, Simchat Torah, the rejoicing in the law, where the cycle continues again. But today we are at Nitzavim Vayelech. Nitzavim means you are standing, and it comes uh, really from uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 30, uh, ch sorry, 29, verse 9, or in the English, verse 10. Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kulchem Lifnei Adonai Elohechem. You are standing today, all of you before Adonai your God, the heads of your tribes, your elders, your officials, and all the men of Israel. I love the fact that the Hebrew actually says that when you are standing before the Lord, it really says that you are standing before the face of the Lord. Really speaking about uh, standing in His presence. And uh, His face, the Lord's face, speaks of His favor. If He lifts His face towards you, He has shown you His favor. And that is a wonderful thing. We don't want Him to ever turn His face or hide His face from us which of course is his judgment. And so the face of Adonai speaks of his favor and his blessing. We also have Parasha Vayelech. Uh, he went, starts uh, from Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 1 and to uh, 31 verse, uh, sorry, right to the end of uh, chapter 31. Uh, Deuteronomy 31 verse 1 says, Vayelech Moshe Varebe et Hadvarim Haele et Kol Israel." Then Moses went and spoke these words to the whole house of Israel. And so today, we see Moses speaking to the Israelites uh, in the wilderness. And they were called by Moses to stand in the presence of the Lord in a covenant renewal ceremony. Now they were not committing to a new covenant, they were reaffirming the covenant that God had already made with them through Moses. To the extent that they were obedient to the covenant, they would experience God's blessing. And God would also prosper them. And there's some beautiful blessings in these uh, verses. But if they disobeyed the Lord and turned to worship other gods, then they would be punished. And the Israelites would be banished, exiled out of the land of Israel. And so there's also some very dire curses that we see in these verses as well. So Moses really calls the people of Israel to make a choice, to choose life rather than death, to choose blessing rather than curse. Sadly, Moses predicts that they will turn away from the Lord and that uh, they will commit idolatry and they will defile the land and the Lord will throw them out of the land. So there's a very sad prediction of Israel's failure and disobedience. But God also makes a promise that wherever we are scattered in the world, that if we turn to him, if we repent of our sins, then he will restore us to the land once again. And praise the Lord that as we look back over the history of Israel, yes, we have been exiled out of our land twice. Perhaps that was judgment from the Lord. But as we've repented, the Lord has returned us to our own land twice. No nation on the face of the earth have been exiled out of the land twice and returned twice. This is certainly... Uh, a sign of the faithfulness of God to the people of Israel. And so in this parasha, there is a wonderful uh, promise of restoration if his people, we, would turn from our sin. And it's really fitting that we should be considering these scriptures about repentance today on the Shabbat, which is one week away from Rosh Hashanah. Next Friday night on Shabbat begins Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, or Yom Teruah, the Day of Trumpets. And uh, it marks the beginning of the New Year, 5,781. Are you ready for the new Jewish year coming up? So this parasha speaks to us about repentance and gets us ready for the sound of the shofar that we will hear on Friday night. And, of course, the sound of the shofar is a call to repentance. And this is the posture that we should have before the Lord at this time, a posture of repentance. So let's read uh, verses 1 to 10 of Deuteronomy chapter 30. And in these verses we see 
that uh, there are 10 verses, but repentance, or the Hebrew word shuv, which is the root word for repentance, which means to turn, uh, appears seven times. Repentance comes from this word shuv, return. And uh, it means returning in a variety, a variety of different ways. When it comes to turning from our sin, repentance means to turn the other direction. Let's read uh, these verses. And uh, they are ten verses. See how many times it talks about repentance or returning to the Lord or a, uh, the word again, turning again. So let's read. When all these things befall you, the blessing and the curse that I've set before you, and you take them to heart amidst the various nations to which the Lord your God has banished you. See how it predicted the exile. And you return, that is uh, to Shiva, as you return to the Lord your God, and as you and your children heed his command with all your heart and soul, just as I enjoin upon you this day, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and take you back in love. He will bring you together again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. Even if your outcasts are at the ends of the world, from there the Lord the, your God will gather you. From there he will fetch you. And the Lord your God will bring you to the land that your fathers possessed. And you shall possess it, and he shall make you more prosperous and more numerous than your fathers. Then the Lord your God will open up your heart and the hearts of your offspring to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul in order that you may live. The Lord your God will inflict all those curses upon the enemies and foes who persecuted you. You, however, will again heed the Lord and obey all his commands that I enjoin upon you this day. And the Lord your God will grant you abounding prosperity in all your undertakings, in the issue of your womb, the offspring of your cattle, and the produce of your soil. For the Lord will again delight in your well-being as he did in that of your fathers, since you'll be heeding the Lord your God and keeping his commandments and laws that are recorded in this book of the teaching. Once you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And so to, have, uh, 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 to repent uh, is to have a change of heart. It is as if you are walking in one direction and you turn 90 degrees and walk the other direction. It really is a wonderful illustration of what we need to do. At times, many times, we are walking in one direction our own way. The Lord calls us to do teshuvah, that is to turn around 90 degrees and go back the Lord's way. And when we return to the Lord, He returns to us. Isn't that a wonderful thing? If we return to Him, He is so ready and so willing to turn back to us. As we read in Malachi chapter 3, verse 7, From the days of your ancestors you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says Adonai Tsevaot. Yet you say, how should we return? Now, Because of God's covenant love with his people, he promises that if we return to him, he will return to us. He is right there willing and wanting to forgive. I'm so gra grateful to God that there is this gate of repentance that each one of us can enter. And I'm so grateful to God that there is, that there is His grace willing to forgive. Because uh, we all need that. Uh, I'm sure you realize that each day there are things that we need to turn from, to repent of. And I'm so grateful for God's uh, grace upon us. We should not wonder how should we return. The way is very clear. Repent, in your, repent of your sins. Repent of your disobedience. Repent of your disbelief. And return to the Lord in faithfulness. As we come up now to Rosh Hashanah next week, as we enter into the, the Aseret Yemai Teshuvah, the 10 days of repentance from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, as we enter these Yamim Noraim, these days of awe, let us be ready with the right posture in our hearts. That is a posture of repentance, turning from our own way to God's way. The Haftarah portion for today, that's the reading from uh, the, the prophets, uh, 
is from Isaiah chapter 61. And I'd like to read the first couple of verses of the Haftarah. I love these verses. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts. And as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up. So the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. Isn't that a wonderful promise to, uh, of the Lord for all of us today? We don't come to the Lord wearing our own garments of salvation. No. We don't come to the Lord trusting in our own righteousness. No. We come with the robes of righteousness, with the garments of salvation that God has given us. And for those of us who are trusting in Yeshua the Messiah, we know that our righteousness comes from Him, imputed to us through our faith in Him. We come clothed in the Messiah's righteousness. That is why we can come to God with confidence, not standing in our own righteousness, not showing off our own good deeds, but trusting in God's righteousness before us. We all need this, to come to Him clothed with His righteousness. Romans chapter 3 verse 21 tells us, But now God's righteousness apart from Torah has been revealed, to which the Torah and the prophets bear witness, namely the righteousness of God through putting trust in Messiah Yeshua to all who keep on trusting, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Hear that again. For all have sinned and fall short of of the glory of God. There's none of us that are exempt from this. They are set right as a gift of His grace through the redemption that is in Messiah Yeshua. God set forth Yeshua as an atonement through faith in His blood to show His righteousness in passing over sins already committed. Through God's forbearance, He demonstrates His righteousness at this present time that He Himself is just and that he is the justifier of, of the one who puts his trust in Yeshua. What wonderful words to us. Remember these words this week from Romans chapter 3 verses 21 to 26. And remember these words as we come into the days of awe and the days of repentance. And as we turn to God in repentance at Yom Teruah this year. Put in our faith and trust in Yeshua the Messiah. We know that our sins were atoned for, and that our names are written in the book of life forever. I look forward to sharing with you on Thursday night. We have a webinar for Celebrate Messiah. Please go onto our website and uh, register for this free webinar Thursday night. It's all about uh, Messiah revealed in the Jewish High Holidays. Then again on Friday night, join us for the Beit HaMashiach Rosh Hashanah service. And we're very excited about entering into the new year, 5,781. But come with a repentant heart and a heart that's open to God. The prophet Joel says, Blow the shofar in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the living in the land tremble, for the day of Adonai is coming. Surely it is near. And so for this month of Elul, uh, in traditional Judaism, every morning is a time of repentance and also a time to blow the shofar. Now, it's not traditional to blow it on Shabbat, but today uh, I would like to blow the shofar as a little teaser for what's coming up on Friday night. We don't always do things all that traditionally here. So let's hear the sound of the shofar as we get ready for the coming of Rosh Hashanah on Friday night. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, let us now uh, complete our service together as uh, we say the, the ironic benediction together. 
Hebrecha Adonai Vihishma Recha, Yae Adonai Panavlecha Vikonecha, Hisa Adonai Panabalecha Vyasemlecha Shalom, Vishem Yeshua Mishichenu. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Lawrence, and thank you for Bloody Shofar. So powerful sound and what is coming for the, uh, these holidays. <laughs> and just let's sing together um, in Emato. This one is special because keep us together even in the distance. And I want to say hello to Josh, David, uh, son of David, who loves this song. So hello, Josh, and sing with me, okay? In Emato Pumana. Shebedachim gam yaka Ine mato Shebedachim gam yaka Ine mato Shebedachim gam yaka Shebedachim gam yaka Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to dwell together in unity in the Lord. And we thank God for his blessing upon us. Thank you so much to the skeleton crew here during this lockdown period. They're running our service for us. They've done a fantastic job. Thank you to you all. And uh, it has been great to be able to uh, join with you this morning in worship of the Lord. And we look forward to uh, the second service at uh, 10.30. Uh, but we also have something special to show you as well. Yes, that's right, uh, Rabbi Lawrence, before we leave. This is what we want to say. Uh, thank you for all of you who are there in the live chat. Um, just quickly, Dave, Alex, Isaac, Peter, and Davy, and Divi, uh, Jace, Heidi, all of you, uh, Shabbat Shalom. And just let's see this beautiful, as we promised last week. Let's see this interview from Peter and Pat from Shoreshill. So Shabbat Shalom, and see you in the next, Shabbat next Shalom. service. We are missing everybody, aren't we? Yes. Indeed, yeah. We can see people on computers and TV, but you can't give those hugs, can you? <laughs> no! <laughs> but we're so grateful that we can still have uh, see you all through the Zoom meetings and uh, have the services. We should also say that we enjoy the Eric's ministry to us. And Ashley's. And Ashley. Ashley knows uh, what I think of his preaching <laughs> and we really appreciate both of them. We are missing the early morning drives in the dark. <laughs> That's true, yeah. This is the first time since I was three years old that I've not been able to get to a, a service. Mm. I, I grew up attending Sunday school at that age. And then the young boy joined the choir and so it went on until I was ordained as a minister and shortly after that we we joined Bethlehemship yes we started attending Bethlehemship yeah. and it's it's our home we didn't think we would go every week because it was too far to drive <laughs> but every time we thought we would just go one, once a fortnight or once a month Louise would come up and say, Lawrence is preaching next week. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had to be there because we enjoyed his preaching. For all of you who are parents of young children, sometimes you can get um, perhaps a bit impatient or embarrassed when they're running around during services or 
um, an interrupting conversation with adults after the service is over. But this is one of the groups within the fellowship that we miss. Mm -hmm. We've got lots of grandchildren and great-grandchildren, but they're also far away that we rely upon PhD children to remind us of our own offspring. PHM. PHM. <laughs> it's a very welcoming congregation and lots of people have said to us they really enjoyed the love that you find there. Did you find that? Oh yes, yeah. indeed. The sense of love and behaviour, it's, it's quite real for me. Like on my birthday that we were already in quarantine and then um, Karina brought me a cake at the front door for my birthday. It was just like, wow. Many of you remember David Morris. And um, just before he went back to Israel, he spoke to me and um, it was a time when we were thinking of moving closer to Melbourne. And he said, I hope you don't move to closer to Melbourne because the time might come when we need somewhere in the country where our Jewish people can get and be fairly safe from the problems that are arising and are going to, going to arise. And um, we were thinking in terms of persecution of Jews, but um, here we were last year, we um, heard that Christiana was looking at um, a course at Churchill University. We, we did think at one time we would have liked to post backpackers, but now we've got our built-in backpack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to have you too. I feel so blessed. Yeah, I would never imagine that here in Churchill I would have part of my BH family with me. That's great. BH is just like family for me. Very, very much family. It is. And it's an international family too. Mm. We've since uh, we've um, been persuaded to try out Portuguese. We've managed two words. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and the other one, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm learning English. It's taken us 12 months to learn those words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning English, which is great. <laughs> we hope our Premier will allow us to uh, come over regularly again before too long and to be there for the opening of the um, new building. We were particularly thrilled this last um, Shabbat <laughs> to see that uh, Trudy's lift. Uh, lift was eventually uh, operating so um, she would be absolutely thrilled to know that. She campaigned very hard to have a lift in the building. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was when I went back to Brazil, and I thought I maybe I wouldn't have a chance to see the new building, and I'm so glad that I'm here to to see it because um, it became sort of my dream as well. So I'm glad that I'm here to see that what we have is very unique, especially nowadays. It's not easy to find a place like this when everyone is open like to receive you as a family and we should appreciate that more I think sometimes we take it for granted but uh, I think it's a blessing and um, an, an honor to be part of this congregation most, most of the people that we meet in around the area and even some who contact us are so low in spirits, mm. they're without hope, the world will never be the same again. Um, it won't, but it's going to be better when, as the Lord works and draws many to himself. And I, I'm not naturally a cheerful person, but we have everything to be thankful for. The Lord is in control, he's working out his purposes, and he's also protecting his own who are true and faithful to him. And we'd encourage every one of you. Uh, there are some who can't even 
watch these the services but uh, we remember them and we pray that he'll protect and keep them uh, until we meet again in we hope not too many weeks time and we hope not in the sense of the world but in this in the biblical sense that uh, we shall be together that'll be a wonderful occasion and a fresh anticipation of what it will be like when we met together with all the saints in glory then for no but no more viruses no more wars and depressions it'll be wonderful to be with the lord forever so thank you and uh, the lord bless you and keep you may his light shine upon you and give you peace mm -hmm. amen amen Shalom, Shalom everyone. <laughs>